I mean, we thought it was a risk ahead of um, the coronavirus crisis, uh, to be fair, um, that there have been growing tensions. But, you know, at the end of last year, the start of this, it did look as if those risks were de-escalating uh, as we seem to be getting closer to an agreement on, on autos. But yes, I think, you know, one of the longer term consequences of this crisis is likely to be, you know, even greater protectionism around the world, not just between the US and China, but increasingly across the Atlantic. And I was just reading through your latest research report, and the title right away stands out, uh, the title being Euro Area, a positive inflection point, question mark. What's your thought on the Euro Area, and what's really stuck out to you as the game-changing moment over the last couple of months for the bloc? Well, there's been quite a lot of things going right, which, you know, for a European economist, this is always a big surprise. But, you know, the, the fact is that the lockdowns across the euro area have proved very successful in containing the spread of the virus. Uh, as a consequence, we're seeing countries systematically ease their lockdowns, and obviously that is delivering uh, a rebound in economic activity. But, you know, the, the key fault lines that we were concerned about until fairly recently were obviously stresses in sovereign debt markets. And for me, I think the game changer has been the, the combination of profoundly aggressive European Central Bank bond buying accompanied with this announcement of the EU Recovery Fund, which I think really does reduce uh, the, the capacity of, of euro area bond markets to provide a nasty shock to the recovery later on, which I thought was a very live and, and real risk uh, only a month or so ago. And on that point, I mean, clearly it has had a positive impact if you look at bond markets, the European recovery uh, proposal that is. But we're still a long way away from not only agreement but also implementation. So to what extent do you think there is a risk that we see a diluted or delayed version of this proposal? And what does that mean for the outlook? I, I would worry if we had a severely diluted uh, form of this proposal. I think the principle of issuing joint and several debt in the European Union's name and delivering that to countries in the form of grants is, you know, really what has helped bond markets here. I don't think the timing really matters because, you know, the ECB is likely to absorb pretty much all net new bond issuance from, from euro area governments for the next 12 months or so. But I think, you know, what investors were concerned about a month or two ago was just the debt burden for countries like Italy and, and to a lesser degree Spain coming out of this was going to be too high. And consequently, the signal that the EU and crucially Germany and France were going to be prepared to accept some form of mutualized debt and, and reduce Italy's debt burden at the expense of the EU's debt burden was the, was the fundamental principle that I think has led bond markets to uh, become much more calm. And I think if that principle is watered down or lost in the negotiations, then we are likely to sort of revert back to, to square one. But for me, I think the fact that we've got the French and the Germans for the first time in a long time really pushing this form of, of European integration is an encouraging sign. And, you know, the, the size and relative importance of, of the countries, you know, the frugal four that are opposing it, I think are unlikely really to have a material chance of blocking it, particularly now that the UK is no longer a member uh, of the European Union.